converted to a two-seater, was reliving its history with this passenger. In the spring of 1944, the aircraft that was to gain the first kill over the D-Day beaches was delivered to its operational squadron by a woman ferry pilot, Jackie Mogri. She lives today in Somerset, and 50 years on, recreated the flight from RAF Lynham to Rawton. Jackie, then 18, conquered a fear of heights to learn how to fly, and joined the Air Transport Auxiliary. She remembers delivering her first Spitfire. They said to me, now, you, now this aeroplane, it's got a Zerlian engine, and you have to put full left rudder on before you take off. Well, if you do grip them, you have to put right rudder, and, or the other way around. A long time ago now. Anyhow, so uh, I had to do that, and then you open up on the brake, and then you open, then you let go of the brakes, and you'll get over those factories. <laughs> There's only a field. So anyway, I was frightened to death, but I managed it, and when I got to Turn Hill, where I was delivering it, I got out and I gave the big kick and I said, oh, you're the loveliest Spitfire, you know, the loveliest aeroplane I've flown. <laughs> This very Spitfire ML407 was brand new when Jackie Mogridge took the controls in April 1944. She wasn't even dressed for the job. It was a very hot day, I was saying squash and I was in short. They said, well look Jackie, there's no one else here. And this was an emergency. We didn't know it was going to be D-Day and everybody wanted the aeroplanes there. Will you fly this to the New Zealand squadron? It's only down the road at Selfie from Lyman. You know, get him. Take you to line him now. I said, well, you won't have time to change. Just go as you are. Nobody will notice. Anyway, I get to Selfie, and they're all sunbathing in this field. And they're all living in tents now, because they're all waiting for D-Day. And there they are, lying completely stark naked in the best, you know, in front of their tents, and rolling over and looking at me as I walk. I just drove, you know, as best I could with my eyes averted. And when I took my helmet off, there was a big scurry. Everybody rushed into their tents, you know. The CEO came and said, um, would you like to come to lunch? And I said, no, thank you. I couldn't wait to walk. <laughs> Taking the limelight too, the former New Zealand pilot who covered up his dignity at the wartime airfield and flew the Spitfire on its first successful mission. I spotted this junk as 88. So it's about three eights of cloud at about three or four thousand feet. This thing was diving below cloud, above cloud from the direction of the beach here back inland. So I opened the throttle and I don't know what I said in the section or not. I don't think I did. I didn't have to. They were well enough trained. And, uh, 88 flew through one little isolated cloud and he popped out the other side, I had him in range. He gave him a three second burst and blew the starter engine out of it. 